Experience the grandeur of the wilderness, the magnificence of North American nature, stunning images of wildlife, next on Profiles of Nature. Predation, a lion ambushing a zebra, a hawk swooping on a prairie dog, a dragonfly nymph snapping up a water bug. It's a fact of life, whether in the tropics or the polar seas, or Jack Carey's aquarium. Jack has spent a lifetime observing creatures of every shape and size and recording their behavior. Now he turns his cameras on some of the more bizarre inhabitants of our freshwater ponds to see their version of the struggle to survive. Some people feel horror or pity when they see a predator at work. Jack Carey's feelings have changed with time. I used to have a have a real uh, sympathetic view towards uh, towards life, and I'd be very concerned if I saw one animal eating another. But as you as you get more exposed to it, you take a little more pragmatic view of these things. I mean, these you recognize that these things have to eat, and some of them are predators. And uh, if they didn't if they didn't eat one another, it wouldn't be a, a possible for them to exist. The tranquil surface of this pond is deceptive. In these warm shallows, the sun and the plants have conspired to produce an underwater labyrinth in which a myriad of different animals compete forever in a deadly game of hide and seek. For Jack Carey, the pond is a resource. Finding the right creatures for his productions is just one step. Jack must ensure that the conditions in his aquarium correspond as closely as possible to conditions in the natural pond. The starring members of Jack Carey's cast on this occasion are insects, a form of life on which fish often prey, and sometimes vice versa. One of the most aggressive of these insects is the giant water bug. Legs like oars are the distinctive feature of the back swimmer. The mayfly larva beats its gills to breathe. The back swimmer is a favorite prey of one of the most redoubtable hunters of the pond, the aquatic nymph or naiad of the dragonfly. Dragonflies and damselflies together are called odonates, from a Greek word meaning tooth. They are strong chewers, both as nymphs and adults. The natural diet of Jack's aquatic predators includes the water flea, or Daphnia. These tiny crustaceans are a link in the food chain between the microscopic food which they consume and the predators which in turn eat the Daphnia. At the cost of prey such as Daphnia, this nymph will soon transform into a graceful flying insect, darting in the sunlight above the pond. Whether it's a dragonfly or damselfly, the life of an odonate begins in early summer with the mating of its parents. These, with wings held aloft, are damselflies. These are dragonflies. When they're not flying, dragonflies hold their wings flat like the wings of an airplane. Dragonflies mate in different configurations according to the species. The how and the where of egg laying also varies with the species. This dragonfly lays hers directly in the water. A single odonate can lay from a few hundred to several thousand eggs, 
But there are plenty of predators around to ensure that the world will never be knee-deep in odonates. The newly hatched nymph is barely visible. It grows in typical insect fashion, discarding its outer shell as the shell becomes constrictive until, after a dozen molts or so, the nymph has reached its full potential. The nymph has sharp eyes and a unique device for capturing prey. The huge labium or lower lip is hinged like an arm and folded back under the head when not in use. When a target is identified, it unfolds faster than the eye can see. The prey was impaled and drawn to the mouth for processing. Watch again. And now a replay in slow motion. We will return to Profiles of Nature on the Discovery Channel. This portion of Discovery is brought to you in part by KitchenAid Premium Appliances. Consider the elements of the remarkably quiet KitchenAid dishwasher. Surging power that washes perfectly. Clean lines and sparkling finishes. The style and power of KitchenAid. An idea that flowed from Mother Nature. KitchenAid for the way it's made. I built the entire city of Seattle on the roof of my car. See? Here's the space needle. Now my car has wings, feathers, and a beak. A little glue, a few seeds, just add water, and voila! It's not what you add on to our car that makes it more fun. It's what you take off. The Del Sol from Honda. Caesars. Two pizzas for $8.98, plus a free eight-piece order of crazy bread and a free 32-ounce Coke Classic. It's enough food to make a family meal into a... Party party. It's amazing how the right color can enhance and brighten a room. Well, we both went down to Sears. We found this great selection of paint. Through Saturday, Sears has every gallon of paint on sale. Thousands of beautiful contemporary colors. With Weather Beater, I think we'll sell the house before we paint again. Save 30% a gallon on every color, every brand. Easy Living, Weather Beater, Dutch Boy. For the best finish, start at Sears Home Improvement Sale, bringing America's best to you. The feeling that we wanted, Sears matched. It worked out beautifully. See how the Russian Mafia has taken the American dream by storm. Don't miss Vodka Dons, a Discovery Journal special, Monday at 10 Eastern, 9 Central. Contains violent material. Parental discretion is advised. Uncover mysteries of the past and bizarre rituals that still exist. Don't miss Terra X and Magical Worlds. Tuesday, beginning at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, only on the Discovery Channel. We now return to Profiles of Nature on the Discovery Channel. The nymph is always attracted by prey in motion. It's a voracious eater. The prey will be entirely consumed. A wise exit. Although other mouthparts do the work of shredding and eating, the labium does secondary service as a platter. Back swimmers, however, do not exist simply to feed the nymphs of Odonates. They are carnivores in their own right, but they live in an upside-down world. Their backs are white for the same reason that fishes' bellies are white. 
to make them less conspicuous when seen from below against the brightness of the sky. They walk about on the undersurface of the pond, but can fly if they have to. However, they do appear to have a problem sharing space. Now in slow motion. As a back swimmer grows from egg to adult, its general body form does not change except for the gradual appearance of two pairs of wings. And although it gets air from the surface and can fly, water is its home. The odonate nymph, however, is entirely aquatic. It even gets its oxygen from water and at maturity, it will transform into a very different air-breathing dragonfly or damselfly. We should be grateful for the fact that back swimmers are voracious eaters of mosquito larvae, as indeed are the nymphs of dragonflies and damselflies. This huge relative of the back swimmer, the giant water bug, is a big game hunter. It has strong forelegs for grasping and a beak or syringe for ingesting food. An appropriate prey would be a tadpole. These bugs breathe air which they carry from the surface in the form of bubbles under their wings. The resulting buoyancy can be destabilizing, especially when the prey is lively. This kind of bug pumps enzymes into its prey to paralyze and liquefy the tissue. In some parts of Asia, the giant water bug is regarded as a delicacy. This is yet another predatory insect. It's the rapacious larva of the Dytiscus beetle and is appropriately named water tiger. The water tiger has chewing mouth parts but its lethal scimitar tongs are grooved for fluids. This creature will eventually enter a pupal stage from which a mature insect, the predaceous diving beetle, will emerge. It too will be a busy aquatic predator in the freshwater jungle. The water scorpion is a more laid-back hunter. It waits for prey to come within reach of its powerful forelegs. They look so deceptively frail. The water scorpion is another bug with a syringe-like beak for injecting and sucking. An odonate nymph is hunting nearby, attracting the attention of the water scorpion. The water scorpion has captured both the nymph and a Daphnia.
We tend to think of fish as insect eaters rather than insect prey, but there's no such rule in the jungle. We will return to Profiles of Nature on the Discovery Channel. Explore your world. Besides being an educator, Jim Elkins is a collector of antiques and an occasional Montana trout. Having owned a dozen Toyota cars, Jim naturally made the T-100 his first Toyota truck. Your typical big truck owner? No. But then the T-100 is not your typical truck. Observe the Detroit Free Press. The cabin reminds one of the Toyota Camry in equipment and comfort. The Toyota T-100 puts you in a whole new class. Zestfully clean, zestfully clean. You are your daddy's girl. You both love it when your skin feels smooth. Zest rinses cleaner so your skin feels smoother. Okay. All smooth. Soap leaves a film you can feel on your skin, but zest rinses clean away. And the cleaner you rinse, the smoother you feel. Zestfully clean. You're not fully clean unless you're zestfully clean. A wild spirit, an untamed soul, alone in the frozen north, they meet. Into an unexplored realm, go in search of answers, in search of the beast, and find out why the hunter has become the hunted. Cry of the Wild, Sunday at 9 Eastern, 8 Central, only on Discovery Sunday. Don't laugh. You probably have a hole in your home, too. It's true. If you have, say, eight single-pane windows, each with a crack around them as small as one-sixteenth of an inch, that amounts to a hole about the size of 24 bricks. And with the high cost of heating and air conditioning, that's money out the window. A big reason to get high-performance replacement windows from Sears. Call now for a free in-home estimate. These custom-made, custom-fit Sears vinyl replacement windows are state-of-the-art. The glass system is key, too. Sears windows are double pane, low E glass with a thermal insulating barrier. Light passes through, but heat and ultraviolet rays are reflected back. Plus, maintenance on these windows couldn't be easier. Stop throwing money out the window. Get the high performance replacement windows from Sears. Call now for a free in home inspection and estimate on Sears Premium Custom Fit Windows. 1 800 382 4466. Call now. We now return to Profiles of Nature on the Discovery Channel. Any animal that can be captured and subdued will serve as prey for most of the aquatic insect predators. This stickleback has fallen victim to a nymph. Odonates eat their prey alive. The grasping and rending mouthpieces are terrifyingly effective. This unfortunate stickleback grew up feeding on tiny insects and crustaceans, a diet which may well have included odonate nymphs in a very early stage of their development. But what did those organisms feed on? That question points us down the food chain in the direction of the very small, and that's the direction in which Jack Carey takes us next. But for this part of the journey, we need a microscope. Jack selects a drop of water from the pond and then makes a video recording of it through his camera microscope. He follows the events on a TV monitor. He can shift the field by moving the slide, and the curtain rises on another dimension of life in the freshwater jungle. Most of the busy members of this world are one-celled animals called protozoans. To date, about 30,000 species of protozoan have been described. Mm -hmm. 
These animals, whose bodies consist of one cell only, have developed an astonishing variety of ways to feed themselves. This is didinium. Its method is to race around until it bumps into its particular food, another protozoan called paramecium. It impales the paramecium on its beak and then ingests it, somewhat in the manner of a water scorpion. Here, an already captured paramecium is attacked by a second didinium. Food appears to come of its own accord to this blepharisma. Actually, the prey was drawn in by the rhythmic beating of the oral cilia. The bewildered prey will soon be assimilated. The heliozoan simply waits until a more active protozoan impinges on its radiating spines. One of the better known members of this world is the amoeba. It flows around its prey. The captured prey will be slowly digested. This shimmering mass consists of bacteria, an even smaller form of life, one on which many protozoans feed. And this is a colpidium browsing on bacteria. Ultimately, the food that all animals eat is derived from the green plants which alone can manufacture it. And so with algae, the most ancient and primitive and microscopic of green plants, we've arrived at the bottom of the food chain. Algae come in many forms. Some are even mobile. Some algal cells are loners. Others congregate as colonies. The bridge between the world which we cannot see without a microscope and the easily visible predators of the pond is provided by creatures such as Daphnia. Daphnia feed on the microscopic population, but they themselves are visible to the naked eye. The microscope exposes their anatomy, a beating heart, a gut stuffed with algae. There's the gigantic eye, and the antennae they use for locomotion. The common analogy for consumer relationships in nature is a chain. It seems to suggest that a species corresponding to one link in the chain devours the species next below and is in turn devoured by the species next above. But nature is not so simple. A species which is devoured by another may, under different circumstances, prey on its predator, or the offspring of its predator, or its predator's predator. The little Daphnia, however, is unlikely ever to pose a threat to such a formidable hunter as the dragonfly nymph. A warm summer morning on the pond, a dragonfly nymph has crawled from the water to begin its final transformation. All its previous underwater molts were those of an aquatic insect growing up. But this time, a dragonfly emerges. The nymph had gills with which it sifted oxygen from water. The dragonfly breathes air. Like the nymph, it will be an avid hunter. The strong chewing mouth parts are still there, but the fearful snatching labium has gone. The dragonfly instead will make a basket with its legs and scoop prey from the air.
The brand new insect basks in the sun, absorbing precious heat. This ghostly relic is all that's left of the aquatic insect nymph that terrorized the pond. The weather is propitious. Another dragonfly, clearly of a different species, prepares to embark on its career as an airborne hunter. The career is sometimes very brief. The death of dragonflies means life for flycatchers, but no animal can afford to be complacent. Predation is a fact of life, and in the end, nature is the only winner. You don't have to go to faraway places to, to see the, the tremendously interesting things that we have. They're right, they're right in the backyard, they're, they're in your garden, they, they can even be in your house. You, if you just open your eyes and, and look around, you'll see things that are fascinating in, in every sense of the word. It's a jungle down there, but Jack Carey can handle it. He's 81 years old and jungle wide. Up next, witness the single largest tank clash in history on fields of armor, followed by thick armor, 16-inch guns, and Tomahawk cruise missiles on firepower. Explore your world. KitchenAid refrigerators echo nature in remarkable ways with free-flowing water and ice, smooth gliding, cool, crisp freshness, and brilliant light. All someplace a little closer to home. The refrigerator designed from a blueprint by Mother Nature. By KitchenAid, for the way it's made. Great salads here, but try it with Bakos. Oh, Bakos? Mmm. Mm. Better? Oh, my, my. Oh, oh, I am in love. Cholesterol-free Bakos makes every bite better. The hand on the left is waxing a car with an old sock. On the right is the Black & Decker Handy Buffer. It's 25 times faster and so easy, there's no excuse not to keep your car looking like new. It'll knock your socks off. The Black & Decker Handy Buffer. Oh. 